In case y'all don't know who the person you see on the screen, this person's name is Mauricio Garcia. Mauricio Garcia. I hope I'm saying their name correctly. And this is the suspect that was responsible for the deadly shooting down in Allen, Texas that claimed many lives. His life was also claimed as well. As a matter of fact, my first, the first picture I saw of him was when he had, of his dead body laying on the ground with a shot to the face, like laid out right there. And it was the unedited version of that image as well of course by now if you do see it it's probably blurred out as far as you can see on the internet goes unless you come across an edited version of that picture and this story has you know i would say that the story has gotten some traction you know here and there's gotten a pretty big push out there but it's one thing about this story that PC is trying to steer clear of because of one point that has been made. And now is the part where they're going to try to separate themselves from a group known as Mexicans. And I'm going to read this article. Now, you know, now come on now for those of y'all who subscribe to me. No, when it comes to stories like these, I always go to heavy.com to get those five facts. And fortunately for me, they just posted this about five hours ago from the time of me recording this video. The title reads, Mauricio Garcia, Allen Shooting Suspect, Five Facts You Need to Know, posted May 8th, 2023. Mauricio Garcia was the 33-year-old shooter who killed eight people May 6th at the Allen Premium Outlets Mall in Allen, Texas. The Texas Department of Public Safety identified Garcia on May 7th after by NBC News and CNN first identified him. I'm just realizing something. This first week in May, it was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, you had the murder of Jordan Neely in New York. You had the shooting down in Atlanta by Dion Patterson and this mass murder down in Texas. All three of these things happened in the same week. And I want to say that Dion Patterson and Jordan Neely either happened the same day or they happened one after the other. Like it was a lot. It was a lot of tragedies that happened last week. Garcia dressed in tactical gear, opened fire around 3.30 p.m. on May 6, 2023. Allen Police Chief Brian E. Harvey said in a news conference, another seven people were injured. Allen Fire Chief. Jonathan Boyd said in the same news conference, a police officer shot and killed Garcia at the scene, Harvey said. The first victim name was security guard Christian LaCour, whose grandmother confirmed he was among the dead in an emotional Facebook post. Video shows the moment the suspect exited his vehicle in the parking lot and started shooting. A series of disturbing videos went viral on social media, including one showing bodies of victims, including that of a small child lying in a pile. Previous social media reports had erroneously claimed the suspect was named Ignacio Garcia based on scanner reports. However, NBC News and CNN confirmed that report is false. The suspect is Mauricio Garcia, per law enforcement sources to the networks. The gunman's full name was Mauricio Martinez Garcia, according to Fox 4 reporter Peyton Yeager. Scanner audio said one victim was shot in the chest and that the suspect had an AR rifle. The unidentified officer who shot Garcia told dispatchers, I need everybody I got. On the scanner, officers confirmed that multiple victims were shot outside of the H&M store. An officer said a person was hiding in a dumpster. You can listen to the initial scanner audio here and they have it right there. Now it says, here's what you need to know. Now I want y'all to pay attention to this first fact that Heavy posted. Because this fact that I'm going to read to you is why a lot of PC are up in arms right now. The first one says Mauricio Garcia may have had white supremacist or neo-Nazi beliefs due to a patch with the initials for white wing death squad and extensive social media writings reports say it's been, I've has seen a lot of people on social media, more so Twitter than anything. China, uh, China say, well, he was Mexican and there's no way he could have been a white supremacist because he was Mexican. I've always said you do not have to be white to be a white supremacist. 
this guy had on the patch, he had the beliefs. They were able to dig up stuff that proved that he was and had these beliefs. So there you go. See, I can see a lot of people who are probably Mexican are going to be upset because, you know, a lot of times they get lumped in with them because some of the actions of their own doing. And then I can see PC getting upset because then they get lumped in with their group. And then they're trying to clean it up. Well, are they really? Probably not. But yeah, I, I've seen some posts where they're trying where this part actually pissed them off the most. But you know what? Who cares? Let's continue to see what it's talking about. The Washington Post, which also confirmed Garcia's name, reported that the gunman may have had white supremacist or neo-Nazi beliefs, attributing that contention to people familiar with the investigation. According to the Post, Garcia, who had multiple weapons on him and his nearby car, was wearing a patch on his chest that suggested the potential white supremacist leanings. NBC News reported that the patch contained a right-wing acronym. Garcia had an extensive social media presence that included neo-Nazi and white supremacist related posts and images that authorities believe he shared online, according to a tweet from CNN reporter Josh Campbell. Campbell reported that Garcia had an, an insignia on his clothing that read RWDS, which police believe stands for Right Wing Death Squad. A tattoo was visible on the suspect's hand in the video showing his body outside a burger restaurant. CBS 11 News reporter J.D. Miles tweeted that Garcia had no serious criminal record. Some mugshots being bandied about social media as Garcia do not even match his age. Boyd said in a news conference that authorities found seven deceased individuals on scene. Nine people were transported to the hospital area to, to the to area trauma facilities. Two of those people died. Three are in critical surgery and four are stable. Harvey said that the officer was at an unrelated call when he heard gunshots and neutralized the shooter and neutralized the threat. He said police believe the shooter acted alone. Representative Keith Self, a Republican congressman, said the shooting could have been more worse if the officer hadn't been on the scene and reacted so quickly. We will never know how many lives were saved by the swift actions of our first responders, said Self said during the Saturday news conference. The second point reads, Mauricio Garcia had an expired security guard license with firearm training, but he was living in a Dallas area hotel at the time of the shooting. Garcia was licensed to work as a security guard in Texas from 2016 to 2020, according to the Texas Online Private Security Database. The database says Garcia received firearms training in levels two and three security training. According to CNN, the first training level covers security laws in Texas, and the second is required of all security officers and includes firearm training and demonstration of firearm proficiency. The state database lists Garcia as working for verified response security and investigations in 2016, but it says he was terminated in 2017 by that company. It also says he worked for the Ruiz Protective Service Incorporated in 2015 and Statewide Patrol Incorporated in 2017. According to WFAA TV, FBI agents were interviewing the suspect's family in Dallas and had asked for a translator. Neighbors described the suspect as being in his 30s and said he has lived here for as long as anyone can recall. The neighbors said they didn't know of any problems at the home, but said that in the past few weeks, they hadn't seen the suspect's gray charger as much. A Google Maps image shows a gray vehicle parked in front of a house on Piper Lane in Dallas that was tied to Garcia via online records. They told the television station the suspect always wore some kind of security guard uniform, although no one says they ever saw him with any kind of weapon. However, the Washington Post reported that Garcia was living in a Dallas area hotel at the time of the mass shooting. The Dallas Morning News reported the hotel in question was Budget Suites at 8150 North Stimmons Freeway. Medical City Healthcare told NBC5 that the wounded victims received treatment ranged in age from 5 years old to 61 years old. The third point reads... Graphic videos emerged of the shooting scene, including the moment Mauricio Garcia started firing. Graphic videos emerged on the shooting scene at the mall. One shows the gunman shot lying on a sidewalk, dressed all in black with what appears to be body armor. It's too graphic to share, but you can see a blurred out version on the site. 
As noted, though, Ignacio Garcia is not the shooter, as that tweet's caption falsely claims. The gunman is Mauricio Garcia. It is not clear whether the two are related. One video that is too graphic to share shows bodies, including of a small child, crumpled in a corner outside the mall building. Another video shows officers clearing the stores. The fourth point reads, Mauricio Garcia, who previously lived in Northeast Dallas with his parents, was described as an unusual and used an email account called Death, Destruction, and Love, according to reports. Fox News Digital reported that an email account called Death, Destruction, and Love was listed in association with Garcia. Heavy has confirmed that the Yahoo account in that name comes up tied to Garcia in public record databases, the same databases that say that Garcia also had previous ties to North Carolina. Rebecca Lopez, a reporter with the WFAA TV, wrote on Twitter, FBI agents took evidence from a home in Northeast Dallas where suspect and Allen Premium outlets shooting re recently lived with his parents. Neighbors say he was quiet and always acted unusual. The FBI questioned the family for hours. The victims have not been named. Our deepest sympathies are with the families of the victims, said Harvey. This is a tragedy. People will be looking for answers, and we're sorry that those families are experiencing that loss. And the fifth and final point reads, A man who rushed to the scene described discovering a small child lying under his mother's body as bystanders filmed the carnage. Witness Stephen Spainhauer whose son was at the H&M store but wasn't injured, told WFAA that he tried to help some of the victims, but it was too late for some. He said he turned the head of one victim to help her, but discovered she had no face. She was gone, he said to WFAA, adding that some people were standing around filming the bodies. Spain Howard, a former police officer, told the television station that he discovered a bloody but alive four-year-old child hiding under his mother's deceased body. Allen Mayor Ken Falk said in a statement, Today is a tragic day for the city of Allen. Our citizens, our friends, and visitors who were at the Allen Premium Outlets, we are a strong and caring community, and we all want, of the, want all of the victims and their families impacted by this tragedy to know that we will wrap our, round, our arms around you and we are here for you. The city of Allen pledges to offer our complete support. We know you are grieving, and we are grieving. Rest assured, the nation and the world are also grieving. Allen is a proud and safe city, which makes today's senseless act of violence even more shocking. However, I want to commend our police and fire departments for their quick response. Their thorough training not to hesitate to move toward the threat likely saved more lives today. We also want to thank all of our surrounding municipalities and law enforcement agencies for offering their assistance at the scene. This collective effort is what makes our North Texas communities united. People who frequent the mall wrote about their shock on social media. This is so heartbreaking. My bestie and I had plans to go to this H&M today, but neither of us were ready on time. Wow. Lord, please touch everyone there and all families involved, wrote one woman. So there it is. Right there, there's the details pretty much laid all the way out. But like I said, going back to that first point, that is why some online were kind of riled up and they were trying to get ahead of it. But the damage, unfortunately, is already done and can't be walked back from. I think what was also something that stood out to me was that username Death, Destruction and Love. And they said he would act in unusual for those who did or were aware of him. He just was kind of an odd person I always say you got to make sure to see what those people are about because you just never know what day they're going to decide to say this is the day right here but yeah like i said my introduction to the story was seeing this man's dead body laid out after being shot in the face like literally it looked like something out of a hollywood movie set and also too um tariq was doing a did a stream i think it was his recent one as a matter of fact the one he did on sunday where he was saying something about the shoes. I can't remember exactly what he was saying. He was saying something about a particular shoe, uh, some footwear that certain uh, individuals who are tied to some of these groups would wear. And they were like black shoes. I think they were black shoes with white laces and some other things. And then 
when they were talking about the patch he had on, they looked on his social media and they found he was tied to some of these groups. I wish they could have also expounded more on there and said, what did, like, what were these groups? Like, what were the name of these groups? What kind of, if he made any postings, what did he say on these, say these message boards or these forum chats? What was he talking about? Who was he conversing with? Cause I'm sure he wasn't just there, just the window shop, so to speak. Well, the fact that he was in there means he shows some kind of interest. So I wish they would have went a little bit more deeper into that. But the fact of the matter is, is that he was in these groups. So he was had some ties somehow, some way, because he did wear the attire. He did wear that patch, that, that badge. So, yeah, again, this proves without the shadow of a doubt. You do not have to be white to be a white supremacist. And which also says to me that he most likely, if he had some ill will towards those individuals who to my knowledge were mainly Mexican. He most likely had ill will to black people as well. It's just that there were no black people around for him to kill. So people within his group would have done. Now I want to know, are they going to call this Brown on Brown crime or not? Well, would you look at this now? Unfortunately, heavy. The article that I read from didn't have this uh, accessible to them at the time because this bit of news came out about an hour ago. Allen, Texas mall shooting suspect Mauricio Garcia had brief three month stint in the U.S. Army. Dallas mall shooting suspect Mauricio Garcia was terminated from the U.S. Army after only three months. Let's look more into that. Mauricio Garcia, the suspect accused of fatally shooting eight people and wounding others at Allen Premium Outlets, a mall outside Dallas, Texas, had a brief three month stint in the U.S. Army. Mauricio Garcia entered the regular army in June 2008. He was terminated three months later without completing initial entry training. Heather J. Hagan, U.S. Army Public Affairs spokesperson, said in a statement to Fox News. He was not awarded a military occupational specialty. He had no deployment or awards. We do not provide characterization of discharge for any soldier. Hagen added. Well, that's very interesting. And let this also be something else to look into. A lot of these PC individuals, not going to say every last one, but a lot enough. Go into the military and they go in there with a certain mindset. And this is based on stories I've heard from people who used to be in the army or the military period. They go in there with a certain mindset already. They get the training and then they utilize the training they use in there against the people that they been probably wanting to target for quite some time. I wonder if he had this mindset back then or if this was just something that started to gradually come over time. But the fact that he was only in there for three months and he didn't even get to the point of entry training. This guy just seems like he was bad to the damn bone marrow for a while. Cause in 2008, he would have been 19. Cause you know, he was, he's, just, he would say he was 33. I don't know if he just turned 33 or if he's about to turn 34 this year. So he was either born in 89 or 90, which means in 08, he was either 18 or 19. So the fact that he got kicked out that soon and didn't get that far for having this pretty much this mindset he has going on. Yeah, this guy was definitely off the damn chain and not in a good way. This also says right here, an army official also told Fox News that Garcia was separated under the 2005 edition of the army regulation 635 to 200. 65 200 paragraph 5 to 17 other designated physical or mental conditions. So he probably they probably going to highlight more mostly this one right here most likely definitely for sure very interesting to say the least so after this i guess you could say bombshell was dropped on tba well the bit on the business uh last night i had to come back and add this in so i know i initially had the preview of the video up as a premiere and probably some of y'all are wondering where did it go well i had to take that one down for a multitude of reasons one of them is because i had the wrong picture up of the wrong Mar Mar mauricio garcia that was another person under the same name same age that they kind of floated that picture out there and it wasn't him so that was inaccurate but the one that you see up now that's actually him and also, I wanted to add this in because a caller called into the business last night 
on, you know, Jason Black's other channel and gave this very interesting revelation. And I'm going to read it to you right now, just in case y'all didn't tune in. It says many of the posts address his Hispanic heritage, which some commentators previously cited when expressing doubts about his neo-Nazi leanings. In one recent post, he mused about the Latino people being white and cited Nick Fuentes, a white supremacist with Hispanic heritage. Hell, Nick Fuentes said something like that while on the Pearl show. Now, that is who Jason Black on the business was confronting last night on his channel was just pearly things so when they're talking about the pearl show they're talking about her and that's very interesting considering she had nick fuentes on her show a couple months ago some of y'all have seen the clip by now i think i even read in the news hispanics could be the new white supremacist just the other day this black dude told me the line is blurring he can't tell the difference anymore someone would look white but they're actually hispanic so I thought that this was very interesting. It caught everybody by surprise. I think it even caught TBA by surprise as well, because this was something that wasn't out there initially, as this is still an ongoing and developing story. I also thought this was very interesting as well. He said there were also posts about romance or lack thereof. I don't care about getting a girlfriend anymore, one said. I still want sex, just not a girlfriend, because I don't believe any more women are capable to genuinely love a man. The account had no friends and no comments on any of its posts. So when I saw it, when I heard about this, I immediately said to myself, incel. This gives me strong incel vibes when looking at this part right here. Also, let me uh, point out this picture right here. So this is a picture right here of him, and this is him, you know... His body art, I guess you can say he has a Texas tattoo. I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be. Maybe someone can let me know what that is, but we all know what that is. Now, like I said, this is a guy who was quote unquote Hispanic, but this guy had extreme white supremacist views. And the thing is, like I said, Mexican is a nationality. Mexico, it's not a race. So you have your white you know, your white Hispanics, so you, as I like to call them, you white South of the Bordarians, and you have your Afro ones. This guy definitely mentally and physically displays the, the former rather than, much more rather than the latter. So these are some images. This is an image right here that popped up um over time and then there was another video that he had posted it was a very cryptic looking video where he was wearing the ghost face mask from screen and he had like this voice modulator or something I, I don't know if he was trying to imitate ghost face or if he was trying to do or hide his accent but it was some very strange and weird behavior coming from this dude right here is an image of his collection his arsenal that he used or planned on using if he didn't use all of it now, what's interesting here is that I'm on the New York Post with this one. The first one I read was from the Daily Beast. It has the same quote from the Daily Beast. But in this one, as you can see, they capitalized Pearl Show. And they made sure to now put her name in there. So, uh, like Jason said on his on his uh, broadcast on uh, the business, she she in so many ways has blood on her hands because she invited a well-known well banned white supremacist in via Nick Fuentes onto her show. And he was watching her well watching Nick on her show. And this was ahead of what happened. So yeah, she has more problems than a little bit because you know she was going around trying to so called call out the woke mob. I was like, here she here she go. Here they go. But you got more bigger fish to fry with this one right here. This right here is way bigger than some people calling you out and you so-called calling them out. This is even more interesting, to say the least, and not in a good way.